NASA unveils the largest comet in the solar system. Data gathered by NASA's Hubble Space Telescope indicates that a behemoth comet is moving in the direction of the inner solar system. The comet, known as Comet C 2014 UN 271, is now 2 billion miles away and is thought to have a nucleus that is roughly 80 miles large, according to NASA. Since the comet is still too far away for Hubble to determine its exact size, NASA estimated its size to be larger than the state of Rhode Island. C-2002 VQ-94, whose nucleus was estimated to measure 60 miles across, formerly held the record for the largest comet ever seen. In a statement from NASA, it was stated that the comet's nucleus is approximately 50 times larger than found at the center of most known comets. 500 trillion tons is what is thought to be its weight. But will it move towards the Earth? Well, let's find out. Hey guys, welcome back to Beyond Unknown. Today, we'll be taking a look at the largest comet ever. Make sure to stick to the end of this video as we have a lot to cover. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and like today's video. It helps us a long way. And let's get started. The Earth is constantly being passed by frozen and rocky objects of every size and shape, according to astronomers. They were shocked, though, to observe the largest comet they had ever seen. The newest big event in astronomy news is Comet C-2014 UN-271 Bernardinelli Bernstein. The largest known comet in existence, this giant is 80 miles big and weighs over 500 trillion tons. In November 2010, at the Cerro Tololo Inter-American Observatory in Chile, astronomers Gary Bernstein and Pedro Bertinelli made the first discovery of C-2014 UN-271. Even though it has closely been scrutinized by ground-based and space-based telescopes, the comet's exact size has remained a mystery up until this point. The length of time required to estimate the magnitude of Bernardinelli Bernstein is puzzling, given that it was discovered more than 10 years ago. The most exciting element of its tale, though, is how its magnitude was determined, and it can teach budding astronomers valuable lessons about logical arithmetic and reasoning in the process. While it wasn't powerful enough to estimate the comet's proportions from billions of miles away, the Hubble Space Telescope was essential to NASA's method. A better image of the comet's nucleus was also made possible by the passage of time, because the comet moved closer to NASA's equipment over the course of the intervening 12 years, traveling almost a billion miles closer. Man Tohui of the Macau University of Science and Technology and Taipa Macau, who is the lead author of the research report and the team, relied on these elements greatly. Man Tohui stated in an interview with NASA that this object is incredible, given how active it is despite being so far from the sun. In order to confirm our estimate that the comet would be large, we needed the finest available data. Prior to comparing the five photographs of the comet captured by Hubble with those from Chile's Atacama Large Millimeter Submillimeter Array Telescope in 2010, the two sets of images were first taken. Similar measurements were found in the Hubble photos. However, the nucleus in the Hubble image was darker, much larger than it appeared in the Chilean telescope image. The challenge was to keep the comet's vast coma, or tail, which is made up of melting ice and dust particles that are ejected from the nucleus as it approaches the sun, from the comet's smaller, more compact tail. The team led by Hui created a computer model of the coma and fitted it to Hubble's photos to achieve this. Then they subtracted the model's coma from the measurements, giving them a rough idea of the nucleus size that would fit the images. They could only estimate its size using the core as the sole visible part. The size of comet Bernardinelli Bernstein was discovered by NASA, which opened up a ton of clickbait opportunities. Newspapers have published headlines speculating on the likelihood of comet Bernardinelli Bernstein impacting with Earth using the premise of Netflix's film Don't Look Up. This is actually a billion miles away from the reality and couldn't be further from it. The media has long used spin to its advantage when discussing astronomers. For instance, American astrophysicist Neil deGrasse Tyson's statements became popular when headlines in 2020 warned that an asteroid might strike Earth on Election Day. In reality, Tyson made a joke about American politics while examining this intriguing phenomenon. The tweet from Tyson said, 
Asteroid 2018 VP-1, a refrigerator-sized space rock, is hurtling towards us at more than 40,000 kilometers an hour and may buzz cut Earth on November 2nd, the day before the presidential election. It's not big enough to cause harm, so if the world ends in 2020, it won't be the universe's fault. The Sun is orbited by comets Bernardinelli Bernstein on an elliptical path over a period of 3 million years, with the comet's last approach to the Sun taking it as distant as one half light year away. It will still be roughly 1 billion miles from the Sun when it reaches the closest point of its orbit. To put things into perspective, the temperature is still minus 348 degrees Fahrenheit at this distance. The Oort Cloud often known as the home of comets, is where Bernardinelli Bernstein is supposed to have its beginnings. According to one theory, the Oort cloud is a sphere of frozen debris that bubbles around our solar system as a whole. Ice fragments that escape from this bubble become comets when they are pulled into the Sun's gravitational field. There is circumstantial evidence that links this location in the furthest limits of our solar system to other known comets. Due to the fact that it is impossible to accurately map, it's still regarded as a theory. In spite of this, Bernardinelli Bernstein gives astronomers a sense of the relative magnitude of other frozen bodies, which sparks the possibility of more large comets. In an interview with NASA, David Jewett, who is a co-author on the study of Bernardinelli Bernstein, expressed his optimism for upcoming findings. According to Jewett, this comet is only the tip of the iceberg in terms of the thousands of other comets that are located in the outer regions of the solar system but are too faint to be seen. Now that we have conclusive evidence to support our suspicions, we can say that this comet is indeed massive and dazzling at such a great distance. C-2002 VQ-94, found in 2002 by the Lincoln Near-Earth Asteroid Research Project, was the previous largest comet known at 60 miles in length. What will therefore emerge from the Oort cloud next is anyone's guess. However, a comet impact might be much more catastrophic than a space rock strike. Discussions concerning death from above scenarios typically focus on asteroids. As a result of their orbits resembling those of Earth, near-Earth asteroids frequently collide with a planet with only a passing glance. Researchers suggest that because comets follow more erratic routes around the Sun, they have the potential to collide directly with the Earth and have catastrophic outcomes. Impact Specialist Mark Boslaw of Sandia National Laboratories in New Mexico stated on June 5th that there would be a much bigger explosion, a much bigger crater, and much more damage. The statement was made during a webcast by the online community observatory SLU that looked ahead to the asteroid 2014 HQ-124's approach of Earth on June 8th. As a matter of fact, Bose's law continued, comets can be moving up to three times more quickly than any A's at the moment of impact. A comet might be nine times more potent than an asteroid of the same mass in a cosmic impact because the energy produced by a collision grows as a square of the speed of the arriving object. A dangerous comet might already be quite close to Earth by the time astronomers discover it due to the speed of comets. There are undoubtedly trillions of comets in the universe, but the vast majority of them are found in the Oort cloud, a ring of frozen objects at the very limit of the solar system. The majority of the objects in the vicinity of Earth are asteroids. Only roughly 11,000 near-Earth asteroids have been found and monitored thus far, despite the fact that scientists believe millions of them exist. And that's going to end today's episode. We hope you enjoyed our video. Please subscribe and leave a comment down below your own thoughts. And don't forget to like today's video. And we'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.